Pleasure to welcome on to the Front Stretch podcast this week. He and I go way back. Chicken Nuggy Connoisseur, which, I mean, that gives it away, obviously. Driver of the six for JD Motorsports. It's Ryan Vargas, the Rhino. My friend, I got to start with this. I checked Twitter last night, and I saw that your family, I assume it was your mom who texted you, got a new puppy, and they named it Coda. First of all, I like the strategy of naming your dogs racetracks. That's... That's good. I like that. And second of all, Coda is just adorable. I cannot wait to meet him. I, I'm so mad about that because that was a prank <laughs> my mom pulled on me. My mom really? pranked me. My mom pranked me. I was so upset. It's actually her friend, like one of her best friend's dogs. But we do have two dogs. We have two dogs. We got them a few years ago. Uh, their names are Bristol and Dega. But I'm if we so get another dog right now, if we get another dog, it will be named Coda just because she did that to me. Wow. I know. I'm very upset about that. I thought she was nicer than that. Wow. Me too. Me too. You can't prank me with a puppy. I'm going to get really upset about that. I'm going to have to message her and be like, I had this whole open plan for this podcast with Ryan and talk about I know. Dakota, and then he just shot it down because of you. Yeah, oh. totally messed it up. <laughs> wow. How could she? Well, all right. That didn't go as planned, but so is live podcasting here. Um, and professional transition phoenix didn't go as planned as it did for you i know um and the season as a whole i mean it's five races in i know you wanted to run better at certain tracks but let's focus on phoenix just right now you said you made a rookie mistake and that cost your team a shot at a good finish can you explain to the people that may not know what happened because as you know tv coverage doesn't do justice Mm -hmm. the race within the race that you guys are a part of yeah you know we we right off the bat we struggled and not just myself but really like a lot of, I think me, Jeffrey and Landon all kind of fired off. We just kind of were struggling. Um, We all went lap a couple, we all went one lap down immediately. And then, you know, I believe I went two laps down with Jeffrey at the same time. Um, We just struggled right off the bat. We were really loose, really, really loose. Um, And we made a lot of really good adjustments, got the car to be competitive. And we ended up making those two laps up, which is, big uh making one lap up is hard enough let alone two um so we were really happy with that um you know with how crazy that race got at the end i really think if we hadn't if i hadn't made that mistake we probably would have had ourselves maybe a top top 20 um top 20 top 15 maybe um you know we still had a lot of adjustment to make on the car um but really what kind of happened going through there was uh coming out of four i had a massive run on the 52 and i jumped to his outside through the dog leg and when I got to his outside, I've gone double double wide through there a couple times. Um, I don't know, maybe I just jumped up too quick or something like that. But right when I got out there, I heard the marbles underneath the car. And I just knew right away, I was like, I'm in trouble. And uh, sure enough, got loose. I mean, if you, I know uh, it, Fox actually caught it on their coverage. You know, you see the dust flying off the car. Yeah. Um, I didn't get much higher than I had, had all day. But I guess it was high enough to where it was just enough where the right side was able to dip into the dirt, into the dust and uh, sent me around, uh, got me into the wall, um, hurt what could have been a much better day points wise uh, and uh, and pride wise. <laughs> but uh, it's early in the year, you know. Might as well get these mistakes out of the way early. Um, we have really fast race cars. Uh, Homestead, you know, we should have had a much better finish than we did. Daytona Road Course, we all know what happened there. You know, we were running 12th when we broke. I mean, it's just, you know, there's no shortage of performance over the result here. Um, our performance has been incredible this year. We just need some luck. And uh, I feel like once we get that luck, we're going to start making headway through the points and even have some really good finishes. And even though you guys didn't have the run you wanted out in the desert, I saw you said on the radio, you know, I'll be there on Monday to help you guys fix this thing. And of course, you're a man of your word. You show up at the shop. You have some wrenches in your hand. You're underneath the car working on it. I feel like the guys probably appreciated that a lot because JD Motorsports is is one of those teams where that's like a common thing, I would say. I mean, you're not you're never going to see Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick like going to the shop to fix a mangled right side on a Monday morning. Um, but JD Motorsports, I mean, as the listeners know, it's, it's kind of a, a blue collar atmosphere and the fact that you were, you know, you're young enough as you are, but you're also conscious enough to say, you know, here's the culture, here's my mistake, I'm going to go out and fix it. I feel like the guys probably appreciated that a lot. W- was that the case when you showed up? Were they appreciative yeah. of that? 
yeah, they, they seem pretty appreciative of it. Um, they, it, it's always cool to be here and be able to work on the car alongside with these guys. Um, and that's the thing, you know, you, you mentioned it, it's a very blue collar, very old school team here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's how I've been raised. Um, it's something my dad instilled in me and my, my old late model crew instilled in me, you know, if, you know, you, you can't do things, you can't be a team without being a leader. And if I'm not going to be a leader and be there for my guys, then I'm obviously not being a team player. Um, we win and lose together. Um, and I think that's the most important thing. Um, I, I remember I literally had a photo come of my memories the other day from four years ago. And that photo was my late model sitting in our single car garage in La Mirada. And here I am racing full-time Xfinity. Mm -hmm. I, I say this all the time and I know I'm very harsh on myself, but I, I never thought I'd make it to this point. I didn't think I could make it to this point, but the fact I'm at this point shows the amount of work that myself and everyone around me have done uh, to help me get here. Um, and that, and for me, the least I could do is come and do, come and help. That's for me, that's bottom of the barrel least thing I could do. I mean, if they want me to sweep the shop, I'm actually at the shop right now. If they want me to go out there and sweep the floors, I'll go sweep the floors just because I'm very, I know how fortunate I am to be here. And I want to make sure that the listeners are aware, like, you know, you hear a lot of drivers say some stuff like that here and there. And, you know, you wonder if it's genuine and you wonder if they actually will go to the shop and, and do these things. But Ryan, I mean, and if you guys are hardcore listeners, which I know you are, you know, you see Ryan on social media, you know what he's done to get to this point. And it is 1000% genuine because not only has he done it for the past few years, working his way up to this point, um, but obviously he's doing it now as well. So you're genuine, Ryan, and I want people to understand that because in racing, as you know, it can get very PR, very scripted answer type of thing, but at that, that's the truth for you. You also engage a lot, Ryan, on social media, more than probably any driver in the national series, I think, honestly. I mean, Denny might be giving you a run for your money because he's hilarious lately. Um, but you just are on it, constantly engaging with fans, competitors, sponsors. But the last one is one I want to hit on because we see Swan Securities on your polo right there. You got a lot of sponsors that hop on board the six car at JD Motorsports. Uh, I'm in the TikTok game now. So, you know, obviously, you I'm partner with them. What do your sponsors think of your engagement on social media across a multitude of platforms? Because for a young driver like yourself who knows that you need to market yourself well, you know, that's something that you're doing that a lot of people haven't mastered yet, but you seem to have a stranglehold on that. Yeah, it's it's just all about being natural, being engaging with those who care. Um, I mean, I say this all the time, but I was a fan before I was a race car driver, and I'm still a fan as a race car driver. Mm -hmm. um, I want the fans to kind of know that I, I'm a fan with them. You know, I'm a fan of them because they're a fan of me. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, without having fans, I wouldn't really be, as far as I have made it just because it's, it's important to kind of have that in, in your pocket to have a good group of people that believe in you. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> I have, I, I can't tell you how many drivers are like, how do you do social media? I, I, it's like, how do you do social media? How do you get like on there so much? It's like, really, I'm not on there a lot. I'm just on there. When I'm on there, I have fun. Like, I don't go there. I don't go there. I'm like, okay, I have to make X posts or X tweets or X yeah. TikToks. It's like, I'm not going to force a post out if I don't want to port, if I don't want to make organic, it. Yeah. I'm just, I just want to do it. Now I'll have a few posts here and there that I know I have to do. But other than that, you know, if I'm on Twitter and I'm rattling off some random stuff about chicken nuggets or birds, not being real, I'm going to rattle it out. Um, and it's just cause that's who I am. I that's like having fun. It's, it's not, you, you can't take yourself too seriously in this sport. The, mm -hmm. the minute you do that, the minute you lose grasp of reality, I, I've had to work to get to this point where I'm not a, you know, a funded race car, very well funded race car driver. I'm not a big last name. You know, there, those who believe in me, Swan, TikTok, Alvin Kamara, KSDT, all these partners that are jumping on board, Hoseman last week, you know, these are partners that believe in me because I'm me. And I think that's the most important thing. That's a beautiful thing too. And it's uh it's something you should be really proud of. And I know, you, your dogs, your two dogs, not three, um, yeah. are really proud of as well. I was looking back on some memories um, on Time Hop, Facebook, Twitter, Ryan, and I think around this time is the one year anniversary of when your iRacing events at the start of the pandemic like really started booming. I remember because 
you and I'm very thankful for this because it was a, a very uncertain time in like my career too. Uh, you asked me to like be the voice for one of them, and I was freaking out because I was in a certain location. And I didn't have access to TeamSpeak, and I was trying to figure out how to get all this access, and it was a crazy time. But looking back on it a year ago, some sometimes it feels like yesterday, sometimes it feels like a decade ago. But you still do a lot of iRacing. racing. You do Monday night racing. Um, one of our editors here at Front Stretch, Michael Massey, competes with you in the 27 Front Stretch car. I'm curious if you find iRacing more fun at this point or if you use it more as a tool in terms of your actual on-track racing. It, you have to just leverage it. Like, I use iRacing as a tool heavily when I go to places I haven't been. Like, I've probably – I just in the last two days, I've probably logged 300, 400 laps on Atlanta, you know, not to practice driving Atlanta, but just so I can get my sight lines in. You know, I'm going to go to this track for the very first time, and I've never even seen it. So, I mean – I don't know what to expect, yeah. but if I can get 80% of the way there by the time I'm in the car on Saturday, I'm already a little bit more ahead than I was. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I, that I really work on, but then you also have to have fun with it. Like I'll do random races where I remember like last week I did a race where it was, uh, <laughs> where it was Xfinity cars doing a figure eight at Irwindale. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it, you have to have fun with it. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned Alvin Kamara a little bit ago, and um, you two were on a Zoom together with all the media when you guys announced the Big Squeezy as a partnership. I get to say that all day. Um, is it just cool to have like an All Pro running back in your phone? You can just like text him, call him up whenever, and be like, "What's up, Alvin?" Like, Ryan, <laughs> you know, the NASCAR driver from La Mirada. Is is that cool for you, or is it more so normal at this point because he was your sponsor? It's it. I, I got to like take into consideration just how everything has been over the last year. Yeah. You know, having Alvin in my phone is pretty cool. You know, he's obviously one of the best in the game right now, but then you also look at everything else that I got going on in my life where it's like, there's so many things that I never anticipated being at um, in my life. You know, I'm able to talk to people, you know, at TikTok, I'm able to talk to people who, you know, are cup series drivers i'm able to talk to all these different people who are very big names you know in different industries and it's uh <laughs> it's it's cool when i really put it all together and think about that and it it shows what it shows what myself and this team are actually capable of you know a lot of people are very quick to write us out because i'm the rookie and we're kind of like the underdog team mm -hmm. but you know we brought one of the biggest social media platforms to the sport we brought one of the best, one of the best running backs in the game to the sport. We brought so many new partners to this sport. And I think that's no shortage of what we're all doing here as an organization. I mean, it's no slouch on track either. Like you finished top 10 last year at Texas. You finished top 20 at Daytona this year. First start on the big track in Xfinity, like no slouch there. I know uh, Johnny Davis, I I've never actually gotten the opportunity to meet him, but I feel like he embraces the, the blue collar atmosphere it should be red collar because you guys are Johnny Davis, you know, but <laughs> yeah, um, whole lot of red. Uh, yeah. Uh, w when the Alvin Kamara stuff happened, like, did he have any idea who he was or like the significance of him? He did. Cause I like, yeah. Okay. Tell me about he, that. He knew, he, he knew the significance of it. I mean, he, he was very quick to understand a lot of these things that like have been coming about, you know, mm -hmm. with TikTok. you know, the, like you hear Johnny Davis and TikTok, that kind of sounds funny, you know, That's what I'm saying. Johnny yeah. Davis and Alvin Kamara, you know, that sounds kind of funny, but right. you know, he, he understands the business. He understands everything about the sport. I mean, I, I say this all the time, you know, half joking. Cause I mean, honestly, it's probably true, but without Johnny Davis, it's probably no Xfinity series. There's so many drivers and crew members and pit crew members that have come through this, this shop mm -hmm. that it, it's really molded a lot of the garage. And I think that's no shortage to the amount of work and, everything that Johnny Davis and everybody here does. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here, frankly. It's a good point. Actually, I will say that a couple more and I'll let you get out of here. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole number debate? Because there's all these things swirling that they're going to push the number back. They're putting it on the quarter panel or put it on the window. I don't know. I saw, I think it was no sweet lefty mm -hmm. who made that render of the, the big number. Like yeah. on the wheel well, I low key like that, especially yeah. on your car with Swan Security. I, wh what do you think? Like, like, where do you stand on this? Yeah, I mean, the Swan car definitely looked really cool with that, but you know, for me, it's like I don't, I don't care regardless what they do. 
I would say if they do any changes with the numbers, I think I would rather them just kind of let the teams have a creative freedom, mm -hmm. like have three points on the car where, where the number can be either the door move back on the door or the quarter panel. Don't make every team conform to that thing. Cause say mm -hmm. if a team doesn't have a sponsor for a reason, cause there are cases where teams are blank or just have a yeah. sponsor where the logo wouldn't fit in a certain area, mm -hmm. then they should be able to run the number where, you know, it has always been. Yeah. Um, I think instead of, you know, making one set area, allow the creative freedom of the artists, you know, I guarantee you, you know, I know plenty of creative, creative, uh, oh, yeah. graphic designers. I mean, Leighton here would probably be able to knock out some incredible designs as well. No doubt. Um, you know, it, it's all about what the sponsor would want. It's all about the design. Um, and if it flows naturally, um, you know, you saw some schemes in the all-star race last year that looked really good with the, with the number pushed back. But if you force it, it might not look as good. Yeah. I agree with that. I think if you give designers the freedom and the teams who work with the designers creative freedom, I like your idea of like three distinct spots and just give them the reins and let them do whatever they want. I think that would yep. probably be the best thing. Cause you know, sometimes, you know, teams will say, yeah, sponsors want more, but we don't want to give it to them. So like they'll yeah. keep it on the door. So who knows? Um, I saw you tweet this morning that you're excited to watch the Bristol dirt race. You're not competing in it, unfortunately, because Xfinity is mm -hmm. not there for the dirt race this year trucks and cup are and the Bristol dirt nationals are going on right now two parter. Are you jealous that you're not going to be able to compete in it? Did you want to compete in it in some form or fashion? And three, what are your thoughts on it? Like you think this is a good idea. You think this is going to be a, you know, what show, where do you land on? Yeah. It? Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, we all know how the trucks, the trucks race on dirt. It's, you know, the, big heavy stock cars it's always an interesting race to watch them yeah. get on dirt um as for the cup series i'm interested you know i'm i mean obviously everyone's a little skeptical going into it um i think for myself watching from the sidelines i'm excited to be on the sidelines to watch the first race mm -hmm. um however if uh if marcus uh limonis over at camping world wants to put me in a truck i'm in it let's do it um i know some people so we'll do it <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, that'd be fun. I mean, I'd love to do the truck race or something like that. Um, I think uh, one of the things I say, I, I put out, like, like you mentioned, I put out a tweet this morning kind of talking about the buzz around it. Like whether you like it or you hate it, you know, you can't deny the amount of uh, buzz it's generated in the industry, not just in NASCAR, but For in sure. the racing world in general. Sports. Um, I mean, yeah. And sports really. I mean, I saw Forbes Berg put out an article about it. I mean, it's something that has kind of shook a lot of the norm as to what people view NASCAR as. And you see, you know, sprint car and big block modified guys hopping in cup cars, which is insane. Yeah, it's something you don't hear, no. but it's happening. And I think it's going to be something that's, you know, going to develop a lot of really cool storylines. And I think obviously the cream will rise to the rise to the top. I think you're going to see the, you know, the bigger teams still do really good, but it's cool to see some teams, you know, having these, you know, big dirt racing names come in and, try and race because mm -hmm. i mean i know rick ware has a has i believe it's Wyndham driving yep, one of their cars Wyndham, yep. um i mean who's to say he won't go out there and run top 10 yeah. i mean it's it, it's gonna be an interesting race for sure and whether it's good or bad i know a lot of people are going to be tuned in skeptical but excited that's kind of where yeah. i'm at right now so yeah we'll see last thing for me Wonder what your goals are for the season. If you set any preseason, if you've adjusted them five races into the year, because, you know, usually JD Motorsports, you can aim in past years, at least drivers have said, you know, top 20 finishes. That's about like where we should mm -hmm. be finishing top 15s every now and then. If there's some attrition, maybe sneak out some top 10s and who the hell knows, maybe contend for a W. Where, where do you stand on that? And, and in 2021, is that kind of where you're aiming as well, where JD has been in the past? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, we have no other reason not to be running the top 20. I myself as a driver have proven I can run there consistently, you know, without the, with, with just the bad luck, it's kind of taken us away from having that opportunity, but every race we've been in there, we've been up there, we've had the opportunity. Um, it just kind of comes down to, you know, finding the sponsors to make it happen. You know, there's a lot of inventory that I still got to worry about. And, uh, I'm still hunting. I mean, yesterday I made a couple cold calls trying to get something for the upcoming weeks here. Um, you know, the sponsor hunt never ends. Um, I think for me, uh, 
the goals are, you know, uh, top 25 in points. Um, I think that would be a really big goal. I think that'd be something that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, top 25 in points, uh, rookie of the year, hopefully knock on wood. Um, and then also just keep the fenders on the cars. You know, I know last week at Phoenix was tough. Um, but I've shown that I know when to admit I've made a mistake. Um, and that was a mistake and I want to continue learning and building upon what I know. Um, as a driver, I want to continue being a better driver, a better athlete, a better businessman. Cause you know, this is my rookie year in Xfinity and there's so many guys in the series right now who have been in the series for 10, 11, 12 years, mm-hmm. um, or who have been racing at the top levels of NASCAR for 10, 11, 12 years. Right. You know, this is my first year. Um, uh, so I have a lot to learn and it's my first year with no practice or qualifying either. Yeah, it's so I'm going to all these places, um, really with really with a lot of the odds stacked against me um but i want to kind of prove a lot of people wrong and just run good run clean again keep the fenders on and just run all the laps i think that's a reasonable goal proving the haters wrong getting some top 20s top 25 in points eating some chicken nuggies yeah i racing on monday nights you know where to find him ryan vargas the rhino himself appreciate your time today man i know it's a busy time for you getting prepped for atlanta but We're looking forward to seeing what you got this weekend and for the rest of the year. Sounds good. Thank you. I appreciate you having me.